Hey, what's up developers and designers? In this video, I will show you just 5 little tricks that you can adjust your lightning in your scene and make it so much better. You can use those tricks in your scenes to make like good cinematics for your games or any kind of project as you want. If you're ready, let's dive into it. Okay, so I just created a little scene like that. It is a minimal default map that I just use starter content maps and minimal default. And I just added a couple of walls around this plane. And I just adjust the direction of light to that it can come from the outsource and inside of this cube. So it will look like a window in a good sunny day. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to delete every visual effects and lights in the scene. I'm deleting right now. Okay, as you see, I delete all of them. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to click window, environment light mixer. It's processing, but I can create all kinds of lights from here. So easy way. So I'm just going to create skylight, atmospheric light, sky atmosphere, volumetric cloud, and pi fog. After that, the scene must adjust everything in the scene. Waiting. Make it. Okay, let's adjust those. I'm going to do real time capture. It will capture the light in real time. So, as you see, we have some problems. And I'm going to start with my first tip. So, what is that I'm going to show you right now? In here, as you can see, it's a little foggy, but there is light inside of this cube. But when I go outside, it will change exposure. And I cannot able to see what is happening in the inside. But when I go inside back, it will change the exposure again. So I can see what is going on here. So if you are making any kind of cinematics or shot in your scene, you should not use uh, automatic exposure. So how are we going to change that? I'm just going to write a post process volume. And I'm just going to drag this into the scene. Doesn't matter where it is, it's okay. In the details panel, I'm just going to click infinite extend and bounce so it will apply all settings to the all scene. I'm just scrolling up, and here's the exposure at the lens settings. I'm just going to click it, metering method, manual. Don't worry, it's okay. It is going to change very soon. I'm just going to click apply physical camera exposure and I'm going to turn off. And I can go to exposure compensation and I'm just going to make it something like 1.5. Don't worry, I know it looks so dark, but we will change it so soon. So what we did we do as you see when I go back or when I go inside exposure is not changing so it's a pretty good thing if you just want to create some good shots with cinematics you don't want to exposure change like every frame based on where camera looking so you can use this to just optimize your scenes and you always can know that how lights will look inside or outside of the scene. Okay, let's go with step two. As you see, it's pretty dark in here, right? So what can we do about it? We can go to directional light and we can change to Lux. But before that, I'm just going to go here and I'm just going to click Ctrl L and I will change the 
light's position so we can have a light which is coming inside yeah it's good it's okay but still it is not looking so bright in here so what can we do we can adjust the intensity at the directional line and we can make it like 30. and what's happened it just gives more light inside of the scene but when i go outside it is not so good for outside because as you see intensity is so bright so if you just want to make indoor and outdoor scene at the same time don't play with intensity so what are we going to do about that i'm just going to turn back to 10. by the way if you just want to use a uh, real numbers like a like real sun is nearly using 3.14 this is Near the same with sun in the real life, but that's okay. We can use something like six. And what I'm going to make it, what I'm going to do to make it brighter in the scene, we will use indirect lighting intensity and volumetric scattering intensity. Volumetric scattering is not directly affecting indoor scenes like indirect lighting, but it's still good if you want to see that like those lights coming from a source, especially in the closed areas like that, but it's a different case, which is I will talk about in another video. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to adjust the indirect lighting intensity to something like four. And as you see, it is only affecting indirect lighting. It is still same in here. I can see the sky, which is pretty okay. And in here, the light is much brighter. And make it two. <clears throat> With this way, you can adjust your indirect lighting without touching the instant intensity. So it's a pretty good for outdoor and indoor scenes. And if you're just going to use indoor scenes, still use indirect lighting intensity instead of normal in intensity, from my opinion. We got the third one, which is, as you see, it is looking pretty warm, right? It's because of the sun position at the sky. It's kind of like a sun, goes, sun going off. So if you want to change it, what can you do? You can go to light color from directional light. You can change it and you can make it something like blue. Something like that, something like that. Brighter. Is it a good way to do something? No. Don't play with your light color so much. It's not a good way to do something. What can we do instead of that? First, you can change your light position. I'm going to show you normal. As you see, I'm just adjusting the position of the directional light and it is changing the mood based on like you can think about any time in a day. So we just adjust a bit like that. It is still looking a bit warm. So what can we use? We can use temperature. Just click tem use temperature in the directional light and you can adjust color of your light based on temperature, which is a pretty good way to do it instead of using your light color. I don't know if you see, but we have some other problems too. The shadows are so clear and so sharp. Is it what we want? No. I'm going to show you a bit. As you see, it is looking pretty sharp. So how we can change it? We can go to your directional light again. And there's two settings that we can adjust. Source angle and source soft angle. I'm just going to, okay, just look closely to the shadows. I'm just going to change. As you see, it is affecting pretty more. It is making much softer. Softening a little bit too. So with this way, we can adjust our shadow settings that we can make it smoother or much sharper. There's other ways that you can use like ray traced shadows and stuff, but it's affecting so much performance. So if you just want to 
the like other all kinds of lightning details and tricks that I can make a longer video about that. If you just want to watch it, you can write on comments down below. If there's a like enough people that wanted to watch this, maybe I can make another but longer video about it. Also, right now we don't have a problem like that, but let's say you have a like weird glitches in your indoor scenes because of probably because there's not enough light that bouncing around the indoor. So you can go to post process volume, go to global illumination. As you see, we're using lumen right now. You can go to lumen global, global illumination and you can just change your scene quality. It will affect reflections and shadows behavior a lot. Also, you can adjust your scene detail. And final gather quality. And there's also in the add one section, if you still have like weird bounces and glitches, go to Lumen Scene Lining Update and final gather lining update and make it something smaller, like 0 0.5. It's what it is doing, it's just updating the shadow and lining data more fast. So maybe if you have a problem in your like shiny objects in the scene, it can change a lot. It can make it better, but there, those all settings just affecting performance. So when you're using, uh, be careful about it. Maybe it's better if you just check show FPS and always check your performance. Is it good or bad? So you can adjust based on the performance. The last one is if you just want to make it more cinematic and much more like performance killer scenes, go to settings and in here there's some scalability settings, engine scalability and material quality level, and preview rendering level. But I'm just going to talk about engine scalability settings. For example, right now we're in cinematic mode, which is the highest mode that we can use. But when I, okay, just check the FPS, we are getting around like 75. But when I change it to epic, scene is if, like not looking that much great, but we getting more performance. But when I go so low, something like medium, as you see, all lights just goes off and it's not looking great as before. It's going to go with height. Yeah, it's okay. We're still getting a good performance. If you're making video game, you should always check that which scalability settings you want. But if you're just going to make it something like cinematics, it's okay. You can go with cinematic mode. As you see, it's changing a lot. Also, if you're just going to get uh, more advanced shots, you can use path tracing, which is a different behavior than like ray tracing. It is, this path tracing is just made for tell good looking scenes like movies, like great shots, or maybe like architecture, visual architecture. If you just want to use and get a better shots, which is, I'm going to drop a link in the description. You can see what is the difference between ray tracing and uh, path tracing. So you can read it about it. If you want, I can make a video about path tracing too. I'm going for lit again. Okay, as you see, I just give you five little steps that you can make your lights and shadows better in your scenes. If you want to watch more video from me, you just drop a like and you can write a comments and subscribe to the channel. Until the next video, see you all. I hope you are doing great jobs. I just forgot to add this, so I'm just adding this as a like a little bonus step, but the lumen lumen light behavior is also based on material you're using in your scenes for example i'm just going to show you there's a walls and i'm just going to go to basic wall material in the color tab there's rgba and also hcv when i change this v value it is something like albedo or emissive as you see when i change it it is affecting the bouncing like light bounces in the light and it is not Bouncing as much as this value goes higher. I'm just going to make it 
0 0.8 again. And as you see, it is bouncing more light into the scene. So if you just want to make it much brighter scene without touching your lights, you can use this settings too.